Hey, welcome to Avenue Studios. Today I want to show you how to create this balloon hoop centerpiece. It's an easy build that adds a lot of wow to your next party or event. This design is built on a 24 inch wide hoop stand that I got from eFavor Mart and I'll have it linked in the description box below if you'd like to have one as well. The reason I chose this hoop stand is because all the pieces slot together with these pins instead of needing screws, which is much easier to hide in our design and it's easy to assemble. The first thing I'm going to do is cover the base plate of this stand with four 7 inch chrome balloons, two in gold and two in silver. Now I'm going to inflate all four of those to four pumps of air or four and a half inches in diameter. I'm going to tuck the nozzle of this first balloon under one of my fingers holding the pump while I inflate the second 7 inch balloon to the exact same size. Then I'm going to take my two 4 pump balloons and tie them together into a pair by wrapping the nozzles around twice and tying them in a simple knot. I'm going to make a second pair in the exact same way and then bring these two together to create a quad. Overlap them so that all the nozzles touch right in the center and then twist one balloon from each pair around each other, locking them into a quad. I'm then going to attach this to my hoop stand by slipping the base between two of the balloons in the quad so that the stand is touching the nozzles right in the center of my quad. Then I'm going to take the two balloons that are on either side of that pole and twist them around each other to lock it in place. Now two twists will be more than enough to hold everything in place, but because I want my two colors to alternate between gold, silver, gold, silver, I'm actually going to twist it a third time to achieve that color placement. Next, I'm going to slip this pair of balloons inflated to three pumps of air underneath the hoop frame, but on top of our quad, so it hides those center nozzles as well as sets the angle we need for our balloon quads to wrap really nicely around the hoop. On either side of this center point, I'm going to attach two quads inflated to two pumps of air each by slipping that quad over the hoop frame and then twisting the two balloons with the hoop in between them around each other a couple times to secure it in place. Then I'm going to press that quad in towards the center of the design so that the top of that quad is angled in and the bottom of the quad is angled out. This means the center of our quad will be following the shape of our hoop. Now I also want to make sure one of the balloons of my new quad is always nestled between two balloons of the quad next to it. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing on both sides of the center point until I have two of these two pump quads on both the left and the right side of our center point. Now I'm also arranging my balloon colors so that the colors are symmetrical on both the left and the right side as well as the top and the bottom. For the top side of the hoop, I'm going to place a three pump quad right at the center point and twist it in place, making sure one balloon of that quad is pointing directly upwards and you have one pointing to the front and the back of the display. Then I'm going to nestle in two two pump quads on both the left and the right side of this center quad, making sure they're all snugged nice and tightly together so you don't see any gaps through the balloons. Before we can add in our foil numbers, I want to make sure all those quads are sitting nice and square on the frame, especially those end two quads on both the top and the bottom. I need two balloons of that quad to be pointing down so that we can nestle our foil balloons right in between those. This centerpiece was used for an 150th celebration, and to be able to fit three numbers within my hoop, I ended up using 13 inch tall silver foil numbers. But if you're only putting one or two numbers inside this hoop, you could always bump up to a 16 inch number and that would fit in just fine. I'm going to use a hand pump to inflate all three of these balloon numbers until they're nice and taut, and then I'm going to lay them flat against my table and align the bottom edges of each of those balloons so they make a straight line. Then I'm going to attach these together using a couple of glue dashes anywhere those balloon numbers are going to touch each other. So the first point is going to be on the bottom section of my number one. I'm going to place that glue dash right on the seam of my foil balloon, remove the paper backing, lay the balloons flat against the table, and then press the two numbers together so that they get a nice adhesion. Then I'm going to put two more glue dashes at the top of the number one and the number five to make sure they are nice and rigid. Now as I add these glue dashes, I always want to make sure the numbers are sitting flat against the table when I press them together, and this will ensure that my numbers aren't tilted to the front or the back from each other and they form a nice straight line. Now once you've got them all secured, you'll notice that on the bottom of each of these numbers is their nozzles, and to clean that up, I'm actually going to secure these so you can't see them in the design. So flip the numbers over and then take a glue dash, place it right on the center of that nozzle, and then stick that nozzle to the underside of each of the balloon numbers. 
now we won't have a dangling nozzle and it gives the edge of our balloon a nice clean look. Now in addition to the nozzles, you'll also notice along the edge of your number balloons are these tabs with a hole in the center, and you would normally use those if you were going to string numbers together and hang them on a wall, but we don't need them in today's design. So I'm going to cut all the tabs off following the seam of my balloon so we get a nice clean edge on all of our numbers. Now we can add our balloon numbers to our design. So I'm going to slip the bottom of those numbers in between the two balloons of each quad on the left and the right of the bottom and the left and the right of the top. This will gently hold the numbers in place until we can secure them to the frame using a couple of glue dashes. Now the numbers are going to sit just in front of that hoop, so I'm going to place three glue dashes on my zero just behind the seam and secure it to the hoop frame. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the number one and that will hold my numbers steady. Now if your numbers don't touch the hoop, you can actually use the glue dashes to secure the numbers directly to the latex balloons. The final balloons to add into this design are four pairs inflated to one pump each. These will act as the end caps to our top and bottom sections of balloons, giving them a beautiful tapered moon shape, as well as hiding the nozzles of those quads on the end. So take one nozzle out of that pair, wrap it inside of the circle, bring that nozzle back up, and then tie it to one of the balloons in the quad right next to it. Snug the pair nice and tight against that quad, and this will hide away all our knots and mechanics and give us a beautiful shape. Once all four pairs are tied in place, I'm going to give this piece a detailed look over. I noticed on my foil balloons that there was some fingerprints left over from when I attached it to the hoop. So I'm going to wipe all those away using a microfiber cloth, and by paying attention to details like this, your piece will truly stand out even when viewed from close proximity. If you enjoyed today's project, you should check out this video. So until the next time I see you, remember, stay creative everybody!